All right, here we go. Overdrive off and running. TSN 1050 on the TSN app. Your home smart speaker up on TSN Plus. Brian Hayes, the O-Doc, Jeff O'Neill, Jamie Noodles, McLennan. Noodles back in the house, back home. The cup has been handed out. It is go time. It's going to be a fun week. What a night it was last night. What a night. Congratulations to the Florida Panthers. Man, man. The what Panthers. was it like in the building? You know, it, I haven't been in a building for a while when the cup was handed out. So it was kind of cool. Very electric, obviously. Home home building. Nice to see a couple friends like Louis stop by. And, you know, I'm friends with Greg Campbell, their AGM and stuff. So it was, you know, Matthew Kachuk rolled by to uh, say hello. So it was kind of neat. Like, it was weird. I'll be honest. I feel like such you feel like a pigeon on the ice because it's like you're you're there and you're you're interrupting their moment with like their family and their friends and you're like hi you want to come over and talk and it, it's cool though it is cool and a lot of guys are gracious with their time you give them the first like 30 minutes for guys to you know be skating around cracking beers and all of that and then they get into you know they're chatty and you know, I get, we had Bobrovsky on. I pulled him aside because I asked him, I said, did you do anything different? I don't know if you guys noticed that he took the day off before practice there. He had mm-hmm. to, we, we talked about it. I said, did you do anything different? He said, no, I just, we, we took an extra day, which was interesting because I just, I was waiting for him to be Works. like, yeah, man, you know? Yeah, exactly. I'd be like, man, I was rattled or whatever. But he was just, he's like, yeah, you know, I just took the extra day. Like, guys were pretty cool. But it, being in the building, it was, uh, it was electric um, you know, the Panthers deserved that win line. Like I thought they played really hard mm-hmm. and, and played that was the template from from kind of the first three games, you know, where they locked it down, just strangled them defensively. You know, the the Oilers ended up, I think, with thirteen high danger chances, but Bob was really good when he needed to be. But, you know, it was kind of a I don't know, how did you how did it look on TV? Like what what was the entertainment factor? I would say it played out the way we thought it would, right? Oh, yesterday we said probably low scoring, really tightly checked, kind of nerve wracking game. Yeah. And that's that's how it played out. I, I think it was really important for Florida to get off to a better start. I mean, game yeah. four, yeah. five, and six, they were first awful goal's in the been first huge, period. man. Like it's yeah. so yep. big. And I don't know why. Like, I went from, oh, Florida got the first goal. They're going to win the game. And then it was like Edmonton ties it right up again. And it's like, oh, they're going to – it's their time. They're going to do it. And mm-hmm. it was kind of a seesaw, and it came down to that one shot. And yeah. I don't know if that shot was tipped or what that shot was, but that's the one that beats you. And it's – that's the game right there. They had wow. a bunch of chances. And then you knew Florida was going to win with some of those, like, desperation saves at the end. Like – I don't know. That's just the Florida Panther goal right there. Verhage, who needed to get off the schneid and help the team, and he did on the secondary power play unit. And yeah. the one that beats them, and then Edmonton, like they had some chances in front of the net. The one McDavid won when he was all alone, and it went to Hyman, and they started diving all over the place. You're yeah. like, they're not, they're not scoring. Well, they're, yeah, they're not Flo- Florida this. was selling out, man. Which, I, you, of I, course, you have to. It's the third it's period of Game yeah, 7 of the cup, cup final. Yeah. When else are you going to put your body on the line? I, I agree. I I kind of had that same, you know, weird feeling um, because Edmonton almost scored to make it 2-1. The Kulikov swipes that. That's in the crease. It's bang. And and that they go down and score. Edmonton had, at that point, about a good five or six minutes of really hard pressure. Like, there was one time we were, I was sitting beside Mike Lane, and we counted like five times that – Florida had a chance to get it out, and Edmonton's forecheck kept pressing and turning the puck over, turning the puck over. They weren't getting really clean looks, but they were still, like, pressing, pressing, and that chance, and then they come back down and score, and I thought to myself, I like, is that is that the ball game? Like, right here, Kulikov pops it. Now it's just a breakout play. I think, I think you know, I didn't love the goal, you know, because it, it, it's a little bit, you see a guy goes kind of through, I think that's short where Hagen kind of goes through. But, I, I, you know, my philosophy on short side goals, I don't like them. Through the body, short side. They, right here, through the body, short side. I don't love it, but I can't lay that at Stuart Skinner's feet. Like, I, you know, when you put up one goal, like, you, you've got to find a way. Like, that's that's the yeah. thing, man. I mean, it, the Leafs lost 2-1 in overtime in Game 7. And yeah. would you have liked to have seen Samsonov make those stops? Of course. Could he have? Absolutely. Could Skinner have made those stops? I mean, the Verhage's a great tip. That's just a great yeah. play. That's not on him. But the Reinhardt goal, yes, yeah. you, you, you probably got to stop that. But 
again, it's 2-1. And ultimately, yeah. the story of the, the Edmonton Oilers from the third period of Game 3 onward up until Game 7 was that they were overwhelming Florida, that they were scouting yeah. the, skating Speed. them out of the rink and Speed. odd man rushing them out of the rink, and they were yeah. putting up massive offense. And that just didn't happen last night. And I think you got to give credit to the champs because Florida – they showed up and they played the way they had been playing all season yep. in all playoffs and the way they played the first two games and two thirds of game three is kind of dominant. We're in control. We're going to make your life difficult. We're going to push you to the outside type of hockey. Yeah. Uh, and I thought their best players really showed up last night. Obviously for Hagee, Reiner. I thought Montour was great last night. He was skating yeah, he was. last night. Like he was yeah, really well, and, on and, top of the play. And so Ekblad and Forsling. Like yes. I thought they like had really Like their best really players were sticks. better yeah. than Edmonton's yeah. best players. And, and I we think talked that's about that, Hayes. We said yeah. a bunch of guys got a rebound. And I found it fascinating how they talked about the stress of actually knowing that they were close to the finish line. And they all basically admitted they couldn't stop thinking about lifting the Stanley Cup. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, Edmonton storms back. And just yeah. human nature. Like, when you well, guys, when you were like, we had Kevin Lowe on yesterday. Yeah. And he talked about it, how it was like later on in the cup runs, it was like, this is what we do and this is our business. And we're just going to go out and win the cup. And yeah. when you have a bunch of first timers like the Florida Panthers, it got to them where they were yeah. like they thought about lifting the cup and winning the cup and well, it ultimately almost cost them the series it, but they rebounded and all the things that we said needed to happen yesterday Hayes I, happened I Both was laughing their best players yeah because I when I was interviewing a few of the guys I wanted to say like I didn't know how to phrase it like underpants cam where were you guys at going back <laughs> down to Florida because I mean honestly like even Louie admitted it to us I go like where were you at he goes honestly like you get the more and more they're pressing, it's like you're stressed, right? Like, you know, he, he said you could argue that we probably shouldn't have been up three nothing, but it doesn't matter. We were up three nothing, mm -hmm. and you know, we found a way to 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 get it done. But he, you know, I didn't phrase the question like where were you at, but I I I, I, I wish I had a better question going. Well, what was your underpants camera? It's interesting like, because you know, I I I wonder if they're there's they're vindictive at all. You shouldn't be. If once you've won, you would think just let bygones be bygones. But you know how athletes are. You know right. how competitive people are. Like how many, how many names were written down by the Panthers of people that were turning on them or said, "Watch out, they're puking all over themselves." Yet that's what they were doing. Like right. they were up three nothing. They got crushed in game four. Yeah, we weren't and they, making it up. No, they, you play the games like it's no different. And last night, Florida deserved to win. And in right. the end, after it was three nothing, and we all collectively said Edmonton can't beat that team four times. Right. We were right. That said, in the moment, things changed. Yeah. I thought Edmonton was going to win last night. I really did. I went into that game yeah. thinking the pendulum has swung. Edmonton's taken over. And, you know, I, I give Florida all the credit in the world. I feel for Edmonton. I feel for Oilers fans because it's just – it's it's torture. From, from yeah. a sports fan perspective, there's nothing more cruel. Than, right the there. only thing more cruel would have been a – being a Panthers fan and being up three nothing second straight year in a cup final and you puke it away that would have been worse like that yeah. that's a punchline for the rest of time and Florida avoided that which is incredibly relieving and their fan base ultimately it, it makes it better it probably makes it better because your emotions were so stirred up like the idea right. that you're on the edge of your seat and you were worried and you were concerned and it was a 2-1 game and the goalie gets pulled and there's tight play late in the game it was electric last night. If you're a Panther yeah. fan, I, I can't imagine a more entertaining and fun ride uh, over the last two years that culminates in them winning the Stanley Cup. But yeah. if you're the Oilers and you're Oiler fans, um, it's crushing. Like, it's crushing. That That's a tie game with 40 minutes to play in game seven after you're down 3 nothing. after you started your season what was it three nine and one or two, two nine yeah, and two, one? Two nine and, and one, yeah. Like everything was leading towards a storybook, and unfortunately for them, they'll they're, that's just going to fade into history. Like yep. it's just that fades, man. It sucks, but it does. If Both comebacks win. are just wiped out and gone. The beginning yes. of the season, it's like, oh yeah, they had a tough start that year, and then they had a tough start to the finals, and then it just fades away into yeah. I lived it. it. It's like, oh, we're the little Carolina Hurricanes that just got to the – and then after people are like, nobody cares. Right. Yeah. And it's not I mean, the that thing they, is, they don't do have reasons. You follow it up. Yeah, well, like does, you, you don't have, re like you have reasons year. to be proud. You have reasons yeah. to, to love the play. I'm not saying the Oilers fans should – anyone should turn on anyone. That's not going to no. happen. Nor should they. It's just, you know, I, I don't – I can't picture – and I don't have a dog in the fight, 
I can't spin it as some positive. Like, I just, I don't know if I can get there when, in the end, you end up losing. And in the cup final, it was amazing. Game seven, it was an incredible well, I run. I, I talking to people in Edmonton, like, there was a lot of Edmonton fans there last night. So you stop at chats. Like, they enjoyed the ride. Of like course it's, it's you enjoy like the it's, ride. You, like, of course. it's been a... You know, they enjoyed it in 06 two months for them. It was yeah. great in 06. Yeah. But it just, I, I, they I didn't think win. That, but that team is actually very close. Like, that's the one thing I got out of it, is that team's not far off. Well, like, of they're, course. They're I hope so. 2-1 like, in Game 7, Noodles. Well, but of I course mean, like, close. You, like, talking to Carter Verhage last night off the camera, he was like, I, I asked him, like, do you, did you learn something last year? Like, from being that close and sniffing, he's like, yeah. He goes, honestly, you can't. He goes, you can't define it, but he goes, like, being in these moments and understanding, he goes, like, we didn't panic even though we, we you know, we uh, let it slip. But he goes, Edmonton's a hell of a team. He goes, you can't just – he goes, they're, you know, look at what they got over there. Like he said, they were bound to win games. But he, I asked him, I said, you know, getting there last year, did that help you win this year? And he said 100%. Mm-hmm. Like, 100% the experience of being in the finals, all the distractions that come with it, the buildings – I thought it was interesting. Matthew Kachuk pointed to, like, the extra day, like, the travel. Like, he said, you know, an extra flight to go all the way back and stuff like that. He said, like, guys, he said you you felt it in your legs. You felt it in your emotions. I thought that was interesting because he didn't really, you know. Well, that travel going back like that, there and back and there and back, it's got to wear on you, man. Yeah. Both teams. It's easier to talk about it in that light when you've won. Too, right. right like you know what what was the lesson if edmonton won last night what's the lesson that florida got last year versus vegas right you know I, what are you still did you still learn lessons or did you not learn lessons i, I don't dispute no i was talking about edmonton learning no like, and I, I understand that but the point is now they're they're back at the starting line and right. the only way those lessons are going to pay off again is you got to get back to the cup final right and can it happen? Of course. Dude, Florida that's just what we said, it. Hazy. Like we just if, if if you get if you get to the finish line and you close the deal, then you learned all those lessons. Then the experience slashed. You think for Hagee would have said that, Jamie, if they had to piss that one away and they lost game seven? Of course you, not. It, yeah, and you you had a candid moment right. with him and said it, the, the experience lie, he would have said, Go to hell, man. We just <laughs> lost again. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, but that was there. I think you I just wouldn't think be interviewing that, you. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, but the point is is they actually learned and yes, they, they won. Did. Of course right. they did. That's that was the difference. And that's like, if you're in Edmonton tonight, and if you're an oiler if you're the Oilers, that's what you're thinking. As you should. You, the positive spin on this is we proved who we are. They, they're they a great team. They were worthy of a championship. That's the beauty of last night. The, if the Oilers had a one, they would have deserved it. If the Panthers had a, there were no Cinderella's. Right. Like these were the Oilers from November on were the best team in the West. Florida has been the best team in the East. It was a culmination of two great teams, two great rides, and someone had to win, someone had to lose. Well, you know, that, that's pro sports. It was but in the end, Edmonton didn't win, and and I just I don't know. I'm I'm not in a position where I'm handing them a cup next year because Florida learned from it last year. I don't know if they'll get there again. Yeah. It's not that easy it's for just everyone not that just to easy, get back. Not tough. everyone gets back there again. Like. No. Well, the one thing I Edmonton's now lost three years in a row to the Cup final Cup winners, correct? As the Leafs have. Yeah. Right. The Leafs lost to Tampa and they lost to Florida. Like they lost to Boston in 19. What is that worth? You know, no, I've I seen mean, that. It's three a fact. years in a row, this team has lost. Like, it's interesting, like, that they lost to Colorado, they lost to Vegas, and now they've lost to, to Florida. Like, I think they're, you know, there should be some moral victories in that. But I guess, you know, it's, it's I, not. I, I'm, I mean, I'm intrigued to, for you to explain that. I mean, I, I get it. I, I'm not dumping on Edmonton. I'm, I'm talking about next year, like. I don't know. I think I'm what you're trying to say, Hayes, is there's, there's just no guarantees. To... You could just get you could get Vegas next year in the first round, and they could be lights out again. Yeah. And there's just no guarantees. Right. Well, there is no. Uh, guarantees. That's what we're getting that's, at. There's just the no truth. guarantees. There, there is no guarantees because it's you. You don't have health. If you, if you you know if a guy gets injured, like there's just so many, like it's so hard to win that trophy. Bottom line, and you get close, you get. But thing is, is you know I don't know if uh, they can get back there. But there's pretty good framework there. Like Absolutely. I think they, there's a lot of answers that were, you know. I guess do they have a starting goaltender? Do they looks have like a now. number one defenseman? Do yeah, it looks like a, it now. You know, yeah. like they, there's some questions I think that were answered, 
but that you know doesn't mean anything. But you got to go back and and use that as it to as a to push motivate for you. next season. Yeah, yeah, that's that's exactly what I'm sure they're going to try to do. And yeah. like Skinner, I think established himself this year and in the playoffs. He mentioned Bouchard as a true number one. You know, he's been great. You know, McDavid and Drysaddle are coming back. You know, Hyman's back. Nugent, Hott. they're going to have the makings right. of a team. That'll be one of the four or five best teams in the league going into next season. And if they yeah. win a cup, I would not be surprised at all. I'm not sitting here saying it won't happen. Right. Um, I just I, I don't know what to make of, you know, lessons learned and you make a cup final. And, and just because Florida did it and Tampa did it, too, to be fair to, you know, Tampa went to three straight cup finals, right. something that is a rarity, something we don't see often. Um, I just, you know, I look at what happened last night and. I feel for the Oilers. I don't know what it means for them in the future. I think McDavid winning the Conn Smythe what was was incredibly awkward. <laughs> like if anything, I feel like the the lesson out of that should be let's not do that anymore. Like let's not have it on a Well, I think there's a, a bunch of losers loses. saying he's got no class coming out. That's like, ridiculous. Why? That that's such a stupid why? Like it, No, no, know, yeah, like, I agree with you. I, why would he come back out? Like he yeah. he's, he he led the the handshake line. He's with his teammates. It's a team sport. He's won every individual accolade ever. He's right. he's heartbroken. His soul was crushed. He's out of there. Like right. if, it's just like McElroy last week. McElroy's not sticking around to talk to DeChambeau. He's leaving. Right. I didn't have an issue with McElroy well, doing I, it. I don't have an issue with Ma with McDavid not coming out to I, I, receive I the actually, award last night. I actually watched and paid attention to him. He was the last Oiler off the ice. Mm -hmm. He waited for every one of his teammates. Stuart Skinner st stood and had a conversation. I think it was Paul Maurice or somebody for like two minutes and was standing there. McDavid stood at the bench, waited for him, gave him a big hug, and they went in. He was the last guy off the ice. And then Gary announces it, and he doesn't come back out. And I was like, all right, I can see that. Like, he's pissed. Like, But it wasn't like they announced it immediately. It was like five minutes later. So he would have had his gear off and everything, too. They so would have just – they would have booed him. They were yeah. booing. They were booing Jerry. It just like – just – I had no issue with what the guy did. Who the hell no. wants to skate out there? But, you saw yeah. Jean Sebastian Jaguar do it in New Jersey, and it was like, okay, thanks. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, and it's, it's sad because it's such rise. an incredible trophy to win, yes. man. Yeah. But let's just try. Like, it's almost like an unwritten rule moving forward. Give it to someone on the winning team, so that every it can be a celebratory moment. For everybody, yeah. I just you think in this case, Hayes, it was just such an overwhelming performance. And I agree with you. Name right. the with best Gretzky. player. I, I hear you. I get it, but I, I honestly, as good as the performance was, I would not have had a problem with people just saying, you know what, it's got to be on the winning team. Yeah. Just like the Hart Trophy is. The Hart Trophy is the same way. It's an incredible trophy, and McDavid's had a season before where he didn't make the playoffs and he didn't win the trophy. So I have no problem with them giving it to a team that wins the cup. I got yeah. no issue with that. Yeah. Exactly. It's not worth yeah. yelling and screaming about. But no. It is just you're going to get an awkward moment like that where the guy who wins it doesn't he doesn't want to embrace it. He doesn't yeah. want anything to do with it because he's, you know, he's well, crushed. He just had to mention yeah, suffered that, the worst defeat of his life. That's the first time that he's been to the final first time on the biggest stage. All of that. You're right. Mm -hmm. it's, it's soul crushing. Right. So, you know, he, he handled it well. But at, at the end of the day, you're right. Like skate out or don't skate out. I just thought. There was, you know, a, no, a lot of non-hockey people. And there was a uh, a scribe that asked him, <laughs> this is unbelievable, in the after what he was doing his media, is like, is this the worst loss of your life, <laughs> like, or your career? <laughs> well, yeah, like, dummy. Like, yeah. it was like such Actually, a Actually, Toronto Marley's question. playing the uh, Young Nats <laughs> back in Minor Adam. Like that was tough. I, I don't Toronto know who Arena. it was, but it was like McDavid was kind of like rolled his eyes and was like, yeah, it's, yeah. you know, pretty tough. Like, Although, and let's let's – be clear here too he didn't have a great night like that's yeah. another part of it that i'm sure he's gonna have he, that that was chewing that way at him too like he he it wasn't a no-show for him but he wasn't overly impactful they just they, there was no space for them that was yeah. back to that you know game two ish game three where that's there was right just, felt like game no, two that's exactly what it was there was no space for them whatsoever like there i i thought florida was like unbelievably like good defensively like just mm -hmm. layers yeah. 
great sticks. Like they're just and they, they were. You know what Florida looked like? They were fast. They played faster than they did in the previous three games. You know, and they no, were I thought physical. that dry sidle had some opportunities where usually he it would be slam dunk under the bar. Yeah. yeah, and he either missed the net or kind of. There's yeah. got to be something wrong. wrong with this. Yeah, well, it's just, I, those I, were shots that he just rips home every time. One was like the McDavid pass to him for that pass. That's that's usually yeah, in the and Forsling like, got you know, a stick on that. And the other one, like he was, yeah, Drysaddle. I think they're. I don't know if they're going to announce injuries, but I heard like two significant injuries for him, and I don't. I. I thought i heard one from mcdavid too where he was fighting through but i mean it, it, if you put a jersey on you you got to play right like that's yeah the, ekblad had a high ankle sprain i yeah. think is what well, they he was, reported after ekblad afterwards he, he was he was skating around with the cup and he was like limping. he almost fell he like yeah almost he, well he fell wheel. back but he was he was limping like that's how bad some of these guys were nicked up on both sides not yeah. just and that's not excuse train for anybody these guys were playing when you play uh, 23 extra games after 82 man you you know you're 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 gonna feel yeah it's gonna be rough it's gonna yeah. be rough uh confirm with the night coming up we're out of here earlier early today for canada peru must tie if not win for canada at the copa america so we'll get to that later this afternoon confirm with the night coming up mike johnson coming up and ray ferrar will join us ray was between the benches last night his take on the cup final and what we could expect over the next week as it's go time now. The draft coming up, free agency coming up. Ray Ferrar will join us next. Overdrive continues, brought to you by FanDuel, bringing you everything from the opening line to the final score. Looks like Bo Bichette is back in the lineup and hitting leadoff tonight. Um, <laughs> while everyone was watching the other game, the Jays were up 6-2, and they they blew that game. So, Dude, that's wow. really – we said yesterday game over. That's really – Yeah, that's, that's a curtain call last night. You – Vladdy literally hit one out of the park last night. Yeah, like that was ridiculous. Like that, that's what watching. I obviously I couldn't watch it live, but seeing it on Twitter, that's what leads you to believe. Like, okay, why doesn't this guy hit forty every year? Right. Like, like that shot is elite. Yes. Like that's power. Ah, that is. Forget but, about the homer though. Maybe he wants to play for the Yankees. Wow, this is ridiculous too. I, <laughs> Hayes, you got to wait. Isn't this guy going? I'm never going to play for the Yankees. All of a sudden, it's like, maybe yeah, I'm going to. That was always the stance, and and like without any depth to it. Like maybe he was just placating the Blue Jay fans, which would obviously play well, saying you're never going to play for the Yankees. But I thought maybe it was a history with his dad and the team. But right. I guess today, a reporter at Fenway asked him, you know, if you ever played for the Yankees or whatever, and he basically gave a kind of business like i'm a pro player i'll try to win wherever i am like he didn't downplay it it's also that was weird. code for get me out of here could be code for get me out of here which i wouldn't blame him considering what's going on here and where this team's going but um more on that would confirm or deny a little bit later this afternoon uh mj coming up as well in our best bets but uh ray was all over the tv last night in yeah. between the benches game seven cup final it doesn't get better than that and I think he had to be there throughout the whole on ice celebration. I don't know if well, Ray. He was hugging players. Sam Reinhardt <laughs> came over, gave him a big hug. And I love it. He was he right is. in the mix. Ray Ferraro. <laughs> Ray, what time did you get out of there last night? Uh, it's close to midnight. Okay. Um, and um, you're right. Like, it's we're in there the whole time, but really, we don't have anything to do. <laughs> Because they're doing interviews and the studio takes it and then they come to us for a minute to, I don't know, till they can get another interview or something. And I, I was talking and Sam came over. I know him from Vancouver. He's an amazing kid, just yeah. an amazing kid. And he came over and, and he, you know, he's so happy. He gives me a, you know, a, a hug and a, but I was talking still. Like I, I'm still on the air. <laughs> so, Ray, like, if, if I, I know, know you, did, did you not say to somebody, if I have nothing to do here, why am I still here? <laughs> <laughs> there was – the truck is doing so many things, like the producer. If I make a peep at that point, he'll be like, zip it, stand there. Just stand there in case something falls over and they got to come to you. But I can't see anything. There's 200 people on the ice. They're the noodles. You were there, like they're yeah. scraping up those rats over to the boards, and you know, like there's stuff all over the place. And it, it, it's, it's mayhem on the ice, and these guys are like 
I just love it. I just love seeing how how happy they are, like how relieved they are. Billy Zito was crying for a half an hour. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it was unbelievable. Every time he turned around and saw another guy, he'd start crying again. It was yeah. it was it was amazing. Like I just I loved it. It was it's really cool to and lucky to be right there because it's man, it's the best. When that trophy comes out, the it's like the kid, the guys turn into kids again. Right. The one thing I don't know if you noticed this that I wanted to share with the guys is. I, I I just felt like everybody was exhausted, like the players, like it, like physically. Obviously, they gave it all, but mentally, like, did you sense any of that? Because I, I just the guys I talked to and cross paths with, it was like, hey, we gave everything and more, and when the the cup came, it was just this relief. It wasn't, it's excitement, but it was almost like this relief, like exhaustion that they went through. They all look. When you see them up close, they all look terrible, like all of them. They're all drawn and worn and beat up and super excited. And the guys that played 22 minutes last night could barely move out there. They all moved in like a four-foot circle. Like they're gassed. And I can't even imagine if you're in the other room, you're the Oilers. Same thing, Noodles, right? Like those guys feel every bit of it, and they get nothing nothing yeah. thanks for coming and it's uh man it was that that to think like they're gonna they're flying home and they're thinking about the mcdavid chance that he gets around obrovsky's pad but forsling's really strong on his stick and montour's strong on i think it was hyman and then bob yeah. dives back he looked like a fish out of water and like how does that not go in like how does it not go in and it doesn't and you lose by that. Like, it's, it, it it couldn't have been a thinner margin for win and loss. Yeah, it was incredible. Like, it really was. Like, both teams worthy of, of being crowned champion. You, you get to game seven. You get, you know, you're tied after one. Um, it was a wild series the way it played out. Florida up 3 nothing, and then Edmonton runs away with three straight. So the first six games, I'm not even sure how to make sense of it, but last night felt like a game seven should feel. Like, thinnest of margins, like you said, tightly checked, nervous energy. Yet I thought the way the game started was incredible because of the pace, the physicality, two quick goals. There was some cheating. Like, it was. it almost felt as if they... They got into the first intermission or got back into the room and said, boy, it's cooled down a little bit here. <laughs> like, this, the cup's in the building. We're flying around like it's game one of the first round. They, um, it got so tight, right? Like, that. I really thought the, the first goal really mattered if Edmonton got it. Because mm-hmm. I thought that would have really knocked Florida backwards. And then when it went to 1-1, it really felt like, like again, it was kind of the first goal. I'm like, I, I think Florida's got to score the next goal. Because I didn't feel like they were built in that game to come back and score. But they, they almost had to play from in front. And I guess that's another chance was right before Reinhardt scored, like two seconds before, Kulikov saves one off the goal line. And uh, James posted a picture of, him, uh, he was his face was in the net. And he goes, "Has anyone ever had an assist from inside the net?" <laughs> like he was facing the wrong way, saved the play, and then Reinhardt scored. Like it was so, there was nowhere to go. It was so like hard and physical, but because it was so important, it wasn't chippy or dirty. And like there, there was just, I kept expecting there would be a a crack where it would open up again. But it just didn't. Like that was the last, uh, the last eight game sevens in the Stanley Cup final. The team that scored the first goal. This goes back to '94 with the Rangers. The team that scores the first goal wins all eight of them. Ooh. Ray, and, you mentioned you, you wow. mentioned Billy Zito, and he's done some great things. He brought in Reinhardt and Bennett, and at the deadline, Pozo, Tarasenko. But do you think him pulling the trigger on that Matthew Kachuk trade is what changed everything? They won the President's Trophy, and he's like, something's not jiving here. And pulling the trigger on that Matthew Kachuk, I just think it it, it kind of changed the whole way, the dynamic they played. It, for sure, 100%, and the courage to do it. Yeah. Let, you know, 
they didn't trade away 60 point Jonathan Huberto. He had like 110 points. And Mackenzie Weger is a good player. But they obviously felt that this we cannot win in the way we're constructed. So the next year, which was Maurice's first year, when they, when they, uh, you know, he also had to make a decision to let Andrew Brunette go and bring in Maurice. And Maurice was on was fishing. Like I don't know if you heard that story that he kept calling him and Maurice was fishing, so he never answered the phone. He didn't know the number. And finally, he got a text from Zito and said, "Hey, it's Bill Zito. Answer your phone." Because Maurice wasn't even picking up the phone. And so the whole change, that first year, they gave up 273 goals. This year, they gave up 200. Like, they still cut 73 goals off. And so they decided, like, Billy's vision was, we got to be bigger, we got to be tougher, we've got to be harder to play against, and we got to be tighter. And every guy that they brought in, like, even, like, they went out in the offseason, they got Kevin Stenland to play on their yeah. fourth line. The guy's enormous. He's six foot five. They go get a couple of defensemen. They get Mikola, and Kulikov comes back, and Ekman Larson, they get on a buyout, and so he's at a really affordable price. They're all big. They're all, they're, little teams do not win. And that's, that's the conclusion I've come to over the last couple of years. It's like, it's too hard, it's too long, it's too physical. And how is a small, skilled team going to work their way through that? How, how are they going to do it? Great idea. It's yeah. a good question, and it's one that I think the 31 other teams or 30 other teams are, are probably thinking right now and trying to figure out themselves. Uh, with Ray Ferraro, uh, if you're Connor McDavid this morning, how would you reflect on this experience, and how would you feel about the way it played out? Uh, just, I don't know Connor, you know, but just knowing him as I, as we see him, I think he wakes up and goes, "This sucks. This stinks." Like we were right there, and he's been at it long enough to know you might not get right there again very soon. Like everybody looks at it and goes, "Oh, the Panthers are a favorite next year, and the Oilers are going to be great." And, but what if they're not? Yeah. Like what yeah. if the moves they all have to make don't quite work out the same? What if this was your best chemistry year like what are the chances in game seven against vancouver cody cc is going to score a goal or in game seven last night he makes a 150 foot pass right on the tape like the, what if broberg doesn't take the next step next year like so i i think it must be devastating if you lose four to one you go man we had a really good year and we got to the final and we didn't win but if you lose like that how, how could you not just go, this stinks. This is the worst. And I'm sore and I'm beat up and whatever they're going to announce, you know, whatever he was dealing with, whatever dry Seidel was dealing with, like that that first couple of days when they finally released that information, it, don't you always just shake your head and go like, how do these guys even get out there? And, and I think it's going to be the same for both teams. Yeah, I was I was waiting for McDavid to have the what Nathan McKinnon was was that after nine years was it, remember McKinnon said we had him on last week what what was the the quote yeah was, that, was, like I'm in sick of it we haven't won anything and, yeah, yeah something like that that was I'm without getting to a Cup final too I think yeah. that was after a first or second round exit I believe yeah Ray what did you make of uh, we talked about it before you came on McDavid not going out for the 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 con Smythe. I we didn't care about it. Like I, I think it was ridiculous for people to be mad at him or you know, fake outrage type of thing. What did you make of it? Hundred uh, percent agree. And noodles. Here's here's the the reason I I would love him to be able to accept the trophy or a player off the losing team. The rare times it happened to be a, accepting the trophy. I would love it to happen. However, in reality, like. Take away all your emotional attachment to whether a guy should grab the trophy or not. How is that going to work logistically? So, cops won. The Panthers celebrate. That takes, I don't know, three, four, five minutes. They go through the handshake line. They're, you know, that takes another three, four, five minutes. They finish. The Oilers leave the ice because last night, there's 
another five minutes of cleaning up the rats and everything else that's involved. So now, what's McDavid going to do? Sit on the bench and just kind of hang out? No, he's going to go in the locker room. And then by the time they get all that done, that's it's going to be 10 or 12 minutes. And then he's going to come back onto the ice to, yeah. to stand there for 30 seconds to shake Batman's hand and take the trophy. Like I, I, I didn't have a problem with it at all. There was a lot of discussion before the game about if McDavid won the Conn Smythe, would he, would he come back? I mean, from a TV perspective and uh, the view most people thought was no, like that just for all the things that I just mentioned, I, I don't know what the right way is. Um, Maybe you could have, while all that mess is going on out on the ice, you know, where they're getting organized and pulling out the Stanley Cup thing and all that, that they could, uh, like the tables and all that, they could have a presentation area downstairs. And like underneath the stands, you could present it to them, you could show it on the video, whatever it is. Because to go back on the ice, to me, is is just not going to happen. And by the way, I think it's happened four times in history. Right. Yeah, well, exactly. Reggie Leach, Reggie Reggie Leach, Leach got was the last the one. <laughs> right, yeah. he got it under the stand. No, Jaguar wasn't. Jaguar said he felt brutal that mm. he, to, he was standing. He was the only Anaheim guy on the ice. He went yeah. back out, and they're probably all in a daze. And he went back on the ice and got the trophy. And he's like, "It's me and a bunch of New Jersey guys." Like, like that. It just doesn't fit. It doesn't. I didn't have a problem with it whatsoever. I think you also got to consider the guy we're talking about here who's won every individual accolade ever since he was five years old. And obviously he hadn't won a Conn Smythe because he hadn't been in a cup final. And I'm sure as he gets older, like that's something on his resume. It will say you've won a Conn Smythe. That's a unique club you've entered. But J.S. Jaguar wasn't winning Vesnas, wasn't winning Hearts, wasn't the best yeah. player in the world. He had a two-month run that was spectacular. And I'm sure there was a part of him obviously crushed that he lost the cup. Clearly, he would have preferred to win the cup. And he, he won probably it a couple thought, years later. Yeah, and he did end up winning it. And he probably yeah. thought, hey, this is kind of cool. J.S. Shiger, here I am. Like, McDavid, he's done everything. And Well, like, I'll tell you, Brian, did you see the picture of Jaguar getting the trophy? Yeah, he didn't look <laughs> ecstatic when he, when no, he was out there. It's not like he was like, yeah, look at me. He was like, can I get the hell out of here? Right, yeah, it's, it's awkward. awkward. It's, it's incredibly <laughs> awkward for a guy, a guy that lost to have to go out there and Batman smiling. Like, it's just everything about it is <laughs> on. Standing there with his hand. <laughs> <laughs> hey, congratulations. Great stuff. Sorry about the loss, but here, pick that up and smile in this direction. Um, yeah, it's it's incredibly <laughs> awkward the whole scene, but yeah, yeah I, I mean McDavid, he's done it all. Like, and he just he continued to put up the the not like I'm I'm like I had a conversation about this earlier today. I don't think he established anything with this run because he was already the number one guy. Like he was already the best player, the best point producer. Like he just accentuated that, and he just put an exclamation mark on it, but. Like, he's, from my mind, he's already in a group. It's like Gretzky, Lemieux, Howe, or Sid. Let's say those are the five best players ever. Let's McDavid might be six. He very well could already be six. But the thing he doesn't have that those guys have is a cup. Like, that's how he gets into that next level of conversation or debate or matching accolades. He's got he's to gotta win. And I think that's and, what's and so just, crushing about last he night. He had 42 points. Yeah. And just there are guys that are going to sign like four year, eighteen million dollar contracts because they had forty two points this year. Right. <laughs> he got in the playoff. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> it's like it's it's. I mean, the the fact that he got skunked in game seven, um, uh, game six it didn't matter because they won. But game seven they, you know, him and Drysaitel didn't get on the board, and we all know what a what an important part of all of their offense they are and so they'll go all summer those guys and as much as people say oh they didn't come through they're going to be chewing that all summer Mm -hmm. and that's i'm I'm sure is going to it's a heavy heavy weight when you're the best to carry because there's lots of other guys that you know ryan nugent hopkins didn't have a great series but nobody's going to really talk about that because they're too busy talking about mcdavid and dry and that's 
that's the heaviness of being the best. Ray, you, you make... mentioned dry sidle. Do you think that things just are status quo and they say, I want to play with you and I want to play with you as well, and they both end up in Edmonton long term? Well, I guess it depends what, you know, where his priority is. And, you know, it's not like he's been talking about it, so nobody really knows. But the one thing the Oilers have, of course, is the eighth year. And for, for the amount of money he's going to make, his yearly cap hit, that eighth year would be tough to spread for another team over seven years because that's all they can offer him mm-hmm. unless they trade for him. And, it, you know, so I, I've heard enough that, oh, he's going to stay, no, he's going to go, that when I hear enough of it, I'm like, well, that's pretty clear nobody knows. <laughs> and he's kept it pretty, kept it pretty tight. Yeah, it's and that that's adding insult to injury. That immediately, it's okay. You lost. Now, what are you going to do, Leon? You know, I know, but that's just the way it happens, man. I know that. It's I like, understand that's the, that. I've, that's the sked, and that's he's a big player. That's and, the question, and he doesn't have to do anything. He can just say, "I'll play my year out, and we'll figure it out." And that doesn't have to mean one thing, one way or the other. But if you're an Oilers fan, you're waking think, up. Brian, what's boy, that? Just think, if they were, if he says if they can't come to some kind of agreement and he's just going to play this year out, do you think there'll be more than three days of a season no. that there's been articles out of Edmonton about, is he staying or is he going out? Think about Tavares That's on the like, island, what exactly that was what like. Yeah, but we're living it. We're going to live it with Mitch Marner here. We've been talking to you guys. Did you Different talk about Mitch Marner here, yesterday? Though, Different yeah, viewpoint here, though, Noodles. Different viewpoint here. A lot Drive of people Saddle's want him better to move on. Yeah, that's uh, true. Well, it's that's not about true. the player. It's about the, the view. Like, yeah. no one on earth in Edmonton wants Leon Dreisaitl to leave. Yeah, you're and right. I don't know if Mitch wants to leave. I kind of think he wants to stay. I don't know about Dreisaitl. We don't have right. that answer. Um, right. And, yes, the questions are going to be constant, but that's the proving the point. Here we're talking about a daily with Marner. What do you think they're going to do in Edmonton with Dreisaitl? It'll be every single yeah. second. It'll be consuming. And the fact, that the, the fact that the season ended seven minutes before free agency is – yeah. Like, they're not even speaking grass. I mean, it's like, I, I mean, look, I thought the playoffs were unbelievable. This is too late to finish. Yeah. Well, it, look it, at it, look at Boston and Ottawa last night. They're like, screw it. We don't care if the cup drops. That the was puck crazy. Drops in 10 minutes. We're making it's a like trade here. 12 minutes before putt. When was it? Yeah. Actual, actual time that they released it. Was there, Within guys... half an hour of puck drop, for sure. It was the pregame was on. Like yeah. You know, what, you know what I was surprised at with that was that the, League didn't scuttle the trade call. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. Wait until like, later tonight or tomorrow. Yeah. Like the deal's done. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, well, <laughs> enjoy your off season, buddy. How quickly do you get the clubs out? You got a tea time tomorrow morning or? Uh, Nine fifty six. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's. I like and, hearing uh, that. And uh, the kids are off of school, so they won't be up when I leave anyway. They're. Teenage right. slums, right? Like they're not going to be up at nine o'clock in the morning. No <laughs> chance. So get a peaceful breakfast, go play golf, and uh, yeah, summer's here. By the way, how about the early start for the Panthers or late finish or whatever early start at the Elbow Room and oh, those yeah. guys? That's, that's they were a... pouring the beer off the second balcony onto that guy's face. <laughs> that had to hit him like a ton of bricks, right? <laughs> Yeah, that guy's got a coffee in his hand. He's yeah. on eight hours sleep, and he's chugging beer with the Panthers. It's oh, incredible. That almost gave what, a concussion, I yeah, think. Yeah, it did. Like, that was a waterfall. It so hard. I did enjoy the, the, the one <laughs> thing where they're driving in the big golf cart and bark offs in the back with the cup. You know, they're going right down the, the main street, and yeah. Walt is driving. <laughs> It is golf cart because yeah. Matthew, I know where Matthew lives. Like that's not that far from the elbow room, so they took the golf cart, <laughs> drove it down. But, like, <laughs> and, there's, and there's big walls up front. And no problem, boys. I'll drive. Oh yeah, <laughs> right in his element. Right, yeah. he's the Brett Hall of this parade. Probably he'll be yeah. right in there singing Gloria and the whole nine. I can't wait. Yeah, um, uh, it's, it's amazing to watch. It really was. Well. Great stuff all year, buddy. Enjoy the summer. I'm sure we'll catch up soon, and uh, we appreciate you doing this. Uh, thanks, guys. I uh, hope everybody had a great hockey season because it was awesome and uh, always loved coming on with you guys. So we'll talk soon. You got it. There's uh, Ray Ferraro, yeah. who was uh, between yeah. the benches last night. Really, really cool. And um, 
Yeah, it's go time. Like you said, the draft is in a few days. Wow. July 1st is oh. less than a week. How are they going to squeeze in a parade and then, like, I think wow. they're doing it Sunday. Didn't they announce that? I, I, I didn't Sunday. see that. But, like, those guys are, like, everybody I talk to, like, from the league to managers and all that, they're they're flying to Vegas today. Right. Like, there's, like they'll be hung over. I don't know. Did, did Caber ever write you back in that group chat? I didn't see <laughs> we that. We never heard from Caber. Huh? Yeah. But like, it's pretty ignorant thing I wrote. I didn't even say congratulations. <laughs> it's uncalled for. Yeah. I, I thought that was a bit aggressive. The call. Yeah. He was great last night, though. He was right out there. In I his told element. him he couldn't get that cup hat on fast enough because all you saw was his bald spot. <laughs> I didn't even say congratulations. Not even congratulations. congratulations. I know. Like I got to call him and say I'm sorry because yeah. yeah, I didn't that's, even. That's ignorant. That's yeah, I know. You owe him an apology for I that comment. It. But Louie was making the rounds, too. And, sure, man. You know, those that's guys cool were. Thing. Like all these old, yeah. like Luongo and McKay was in there. I think Sean Thornton's a part of it. You mentioned Greg Campbell. Like he's, he's kind of lifetime yeah. hockey guys who have been down there and a big part of it. Paul Maurice, just incredible to see him win. And yeah. um, Confirm and Deny still coming up. All right, MJ coming up in the next hour. Confirm and Deny as well. We had that Allmark deal. We'll get into that. Noodles, your take on what Ottawa achieved yeah. last night, where Boston's going with that. So we'll get into it. And. Now the crazy season, it could be here. We'll see. I mean, there's going to be movement. You know, last night, kind of feel, again, even on both sides of it, for like Reinhardt, Montour, because they know they're UFAs. Yeah. And maybe they resign, and they're dying to resign. Why would they want to leave? But also in the back of their mind, they could know this could be it. Like, I yeah. just won a cup, and I may not play for this team ever again. Yeah, and they know all this stuff, and it's like they've kept it tight to the vest where they're like, I'm not coming out with what my decision's going to be until after this is all over. And there's going to yeah. be some harsh decisions like, we won the cup, great, but I'm out of here, sorry. Or Absolutely. we don't want you back or whatever the situation may be. Both ways. Yeah. Both exactly. ways. Uh, yeah. Hour two coming up, Canada, Peru, Copa America. We'll tee that up as well. Overdrive continues, TSN 1050 and on TSN+. Plus.